Um, honestly, I can. I've never wished myself to die until then. Um, I remember saying to God, like, can you just take me too? <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's. I've never wanted to die until then. Um, so it was May 28th, 2017, and I actually got a, a phone call. The weird thing is, is I have a weird kind of, weird things happen with the number 3 and 13. Uh -huh. And at 3.33 in the morning, I got a phone call from Chad, my boyfriend at the time, from his dad. And I thought, is he pocket dialing me? It's kind of weird. And I can still remember him telling me that Chad had just been killed in a fatal car accident. Yeah. It's that obviously it changes your life in a nanosecond. Yeah. What did, what did you do right in that moment? Um, well, you you almost don't believe it. And um, Chad's dad was a police officer, and so he'd had a lot of practice telling people these kind of things. And when he told me, he was oddly calm about it, and I, I thought, are you kidding? Am I dreaming? And I remember just sitting up and not even really knowing what was happening, and all of a sudden I was like dry heaving, sobbing, and vibrating, and I actually live on the same property as my parents, and I ran out the door in my underwear, um, barefoot, and remember just running to my parents' house, and it's weird because I was 26, and you're 26, and you still go to your mom. And I remember just throwing myself on her bed, and I couldn't even get words out. I was just, she knew right away something bad had happened. Um, but yeah, you just don't picture that happening in your life. You just, yeah, it still seems surreal. I still hear him saying those words to me. Um, well, I didn't move out of bed for a while. Um, I had struggled with a little bit of depression through my life, but nothing to this extent. And um, honestly, I can, I've never wished myself to die until then. Um, I remember saying to God, like, can you just take me too? <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, I've never wanted to die until then, and I was very close to taking my life a few times, and there was a little voice in me that said, you can't, and I know that was Chad, and I remember being mad at him because I said, I just want to be with you, <laughs> and uh, there was something that, you know, I, I don't want to say I know what happens when people take their life, because I obviously don't, but I can see if you didn't have that little voice like I did, why it happens, and that... I thank him for that because for some reason I'm supposed to still be here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. So, so what when you finally started to like, you know, come out of bed and come out of the fog and out of the, the sadness? Like, how, what, what motivated you? What, what was the driving factor for you to get out of bed in the morning? Um, well, I, like I said, I spent a lot of days in bed, and um, I absolutely love my horses more than anything. And Chad was not a horse guy, but he took on the role of this horse dad. <laughs> and he would feed them with me, he'd cool them out for me after I'd ride, he went to rodeos with me, would walk my horse in the gate, which, if anyone knows anything about barrel horses, that's really close to suicide is trying to walk a barrel horse in um, but he had such a calm energy that he could walk my horse in and she would just went with him and it was no problem and I actually didn't see my horses for three weeks I didn't even want to go out to, to feed them I wanted nothing to do with them um, a few friends of mine and my parents fed them and a couple of my girlfriends who I don't know how I would live without um, kept them road for me and I just I didn't want to be around them because it felt like it was our thing and it was I didn't find joy in it anymore and One day there was that voice again, and I still remember being like stop it I don't want to and you know call me crazy for talking to him But he was like he was right there and kept saying go ride your horses go ride your horses and Whatever happened one day. I just got that little bit of strength to go outside and I remember going into my horse's field and sitting on the ground and the two of them came up to me and were just sniffing my face and I just sat there and cried and I did a lot of 
going out to see them and sitting there and crying. <laughs> and it's amazing how they know. Like yeah. they, you know, people that don't know horses don't understand that, but they, they knew. Grinchy in particular is her and I've always had a really crazy connection and she knew she had to be there for me. So what was it like getting on her for the first time afterwards? Um, well, I cried a lot. <laughs> um, I, Chad worked away so when he wasn't there I would call him. He was the last person I talked to before I'd make a competition run and the first one I'd call when i get off my horse. And I remember going back to competition because I felt like I had to and just sitting there in the warm-up pen in the corner crying um, again the dry heaving sob and some people knew what had happened in my life so they just respected that and let me do my thing and I remember the, my first rodeo back and I was in the states I didn't really know anyone there and I was like I just remember tears coming down my face as they're calling my name and you're in a performance and you know thousands of people watching and I just sat there and hang, like I hung on literally and Grinch did everything And I've never had a horse do that. Like she just totally stepped up and was like, it's okay. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I got you. And that must have felt like she kind of saved you. She did. I honestly, like if I didn't have her, I don't know how I could have got through that. I credit a lot to that horse. She's pretty incredible. Yeah, we have a little special bond, I would say. I definitely, yeah, yeah she's my girl. So now what does the future hold for you? Like where, where, are, you, where are you at right now? Well. I explained to someone the other day because, you know, I started to date someone else and I'm now engaged to that man and it happened quite quickly and I was in a space where I thought I would never even date again. I never wanted to um, and somehow Cody weaseled his way into my life and um, something changed and, you know, to this day I would respect him a lot for that because as soon as I met him, I explained pretty quickly like here's what's going on and here's why I want nothing to do with you. So. Um, and instead of walking away, which probably would have been easier for him, he just said, I, I'm here. I, you know, if you want a friend, if you want a date later, whichever, like, I'm here for you. And I respect him a lot for that because, you know, walking into something knowing that that person is going through something traumatic and is broken because of it, is, it takes a very strong person to deal with that. But my theory about rebuilding yourself after that is I always think that those experiences take a piece of your heart and you'll always have the whole, nothing fills it, nothing can make it better, but if you have the right people and love in your life, you can build around the whole and still find happiness. So, um, you, you got a tattoo on your arm that meant something to you, can you tell us about that? Um, well, I actually have a couple. <laughs> so. Um, one of the ones that I got after Chad passed away, um, he'd always say to me on the phone before I barrel race, go kill it babe. And so I have, go kill it babe, on my arm. Um, I also have a tattoo in his writing on the inside of my arm um, that is from a card that he wrote me. And so I had his writing actually tattooed right onto my arm, so. And what does that one say? Uh -huh. I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> So it says, I loved you yesterday, I love you today, and I'll love you forever. Love, Chad. What would you say to other people going through a tragedy and, um, you know, like how to find hope in the middle of something that's so difficult? Um, I know for me, I'm really bad at asking for help. And I think a lot of us that have that I'm tough mentality are. Um, but knowing that it's okay to be where you're at and no one knows except for you what's right and you know everyone has an expectation of how you're supposed to deal with your situation, how you're supposed to grieve, maybe you're taking too long or you're healing too quickly or whatever. Ignore all that, listen to what's in your heart and realize that there's people that love you and those are the people that you need to surround yourself with 
and they're gonna do whatever it takes to help build you up again so you know just find that little glimmer you gotta dig deep sometimes really really deep but there's a reason that we're still here and there's a reason like you know I'm a God believer and I think God has a plan for all of us so you know ask for some guidance if it's not God you believe in the universe whatever um, you know just know that you're here for a reason if Chad was here right now what was what would be one thing that you would say to him about his experience and and what he brought into your life at the time that you needed him there. Um, well, I still think he's here a lot. I'm very spiritual, and um, I feel him around a lot. Like I know he still keeps an eye on me. Um, you know, I would tell him I love him so much, and I'm always going to love him. And he taught me a lot in the short time that he was here, and I'm so grateful for that. So, you know, I have to thank him for a lot because he brought out a part of me that I didn't even know was there, and just made me more myself and I don't think that I could have gone through my life without that so I'm very grateful for him. If your horse could actually understand everything of what she meant to you through this process what would you say to her? Um, you know I think she knows. <laughs> Every day I tell her she's the best one <laughs> so um, you know I am so grateful for that horse. I wish you know I look at her sometimes and I'm like I wonder if she knows how special she is. Um, you know she honestly fills my heart like she's I couldn't have survived any of this without her so I, I owe a lot to her so Maddie's a barrel racer if you hadn't already guessed all her links are down below in the description so make sure you check her out hey maybe you're not a barrel racer yourself but you want to see some exciting action well you can check out her videos right in the description below so make sure you head over there and give her some love all right I'll also link it at the very end in the cards Thanks for joining us and as always move daily in your fitness, wellness and nutrition.